Hi, I'm Mr. New Jersey, and today we're going to talk all about the infamous Hamilton Burr Duel and what there is to do and to see at the duel site in Weehawken, New Jersey. Like many northeast New Jersey towns, the town of Weehawken actually sits on the top of a large cliff, which is part of the region's Palisades Cliff System. A ledge near the bottom of the cliffs was a popular spot for duels in the 18th century, because the cliffs formed a barrier to potential interference by law enforcement. Dozens of duels occurred at the Weehawken dueling grounds over the years, though by far the most well-known is the duel between former Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton and incumbent Vice President Aaron Burr. Incidentally, Burr was actually the first vice president born in New Jersey, even though both he and Hamilton spent most of their careers in New York. The Hamilton-Burr duel was the product of a long-standing political rivalry between the two combatants. One of the key moments in that rivalry came with the presidential election of 1800, in which there was an electoral college tie between Aaron Burr and Thomas Jefferson. Initially, Burr hadn't actually been a candidate for president. Rather, Jefferson was the Democratic-Republican Party's candidate for president. Burr was the party's candidate for vice president, and they were both running against the Federalist Party's ticket, which was led by incumbent president John Adams. However, the rules of presidential elections at the time were really weird. Unlike today, Electoral College members did not get separate ballots for president and vice president. Each member of the Electoral College got two votes, which they had to cast for two different people. Whoever received the most votes became president, as long as that person received the votes of a majority of the electors. And whoever received the second most votes became vice president. As a result of this system, the Democratic-Republican Party decided to have each of the electors favoring them cast a vote for Jefferson, and to have all but one of the electors favoring them cast a vote for Burr. That way, they hoped, Jefferson would have more votes than Burr, so Jefferson would become president and Burr would become vice president. The problem is, there was confusion about which Republican elector was supposed to abstain from voting for Burr. So, all of them voted for both Jefferson and Burr, making Jefferson and Burr tie for first place, with each having received votes from a majority of the electors. Adams came in third and was eliminated. This sent the election to be decided by the outgoing House of Representatives. Yet the rules of tie-breaking gave each state's delegation to the House just one vote, rather than one vote for each member of the House and the rules of tie-breaking also required an absolute majority of state delegations to agree on the winner. In order to sabotage the Democratic-Republican ticket, Federalist members of Congress plotted to select Burr as president, which would have relegated Jefferson to the vice presidency. The Democratic-Republicans hoped that Burr would publicly step aside and demand Jefferson become president regardless of the will of Congress. But Burr betrayed his party and refused to do so, effectively making him a presidential candidate during this tie-breaking stage. At first, neither candidate could win a majority of the state delegations to the House. The House went through 35 indecisive votes on who should be president. Soon enough, however, Alexander Hamilton stepped in to swing the election to Jefferson, Although he wasn't a member of Congress himself, he was a prominent figure in the Federalist Party and had influence with many of its members. Hamilton thus persuaded members from several delegations to change their votes, giving Jefferson the majority of delegations needed to win. Jefferson thus became the third president of the United States in 1801, and as the second place winner, Aaron Burr became vice president. However, the vice presidency was considered to be weak and of little importance in early American history, far from the major and empowered position it is today. 
Another key moment in the Hamilton-Burr rivalry came not long later. In the aftermath of Burr's presidential defeat, he decided to run for governor of New York. But Hamilton advocated against Burr in this contest, and helped ensure that Burr lost. Tensions kept heating up between the two politicians, including attacks on each other in the press. Finally, in 1804, the two agreed to meet in Weehawken, New Jersey for a duel. The Weehawken dueling grounds was the same spot that Alexander Hamilton's first son, Philip Hamilton, had died in a duel of his own just a few years earlier. Duels in this era were largely considered opportunities to defend one's honor, and according to custom, you didn't actually have to shoot at each other as long as you proved you were brave enough to show up and to stare the other person down. In such cases, combatants would often just fire their pistols in a random direction where no one was standing, essentially throwing away their shots. In the lead-up to the Hamilton-Burr duel, Hamilton publicly stated that he planned to throw away his shot rather than shoot to kill Burr. And when the duel finally came on July 11th, 1804, that's exactly what Hamilton did. Tragically, Aaron Burr did not reciprocate the gesture, instead shooting directly at Hamilton and hitting him. The wounded Hamilton was put in a boat and brought back to New York, where he died of his wounds the next day. This duel launched a fascinating period in Aaron Burr's life that most people don't know about. At first, Burr was charged with murder in both New Jersey and New York but the charges eventually got dropped. Burr was actually able to finish out his term as vice president, but since he had killed a prominent and well-liked American, his reputation was utterly destroyed, and his political career was effectively done after that point. Thus, after his term was up, Burr left the East Coast to head into the interior of North America. There, He allegedly conspired with the area's military governor to gather troops, seize what was then the western United States for himself, and basically run his own country or empire. However, word of the alleged plot made it back to Washington, where a warrant was issued for Burr's arrest. Burr was captured and charged with treason against the United States, but was acquitted at his trial. After that, Burr continued to live his life. He spent some time in Europe, but eventually came back to New York to practice law. At one point, he got married to a woman named Eliza Jumel, but she decided to divorce him not long into their marriage. And in an epic twist of irony, she chose Alexander Hamilton Jr., one of Alexander Hamilton's younger sons, to be her divorce attorney. So, Alexander Hamilton Jr. got to help a woman divorce the guy who had killed his dad. Anyway, Aaron Burr ultimately died in 1836. So, that's enough about Burr. What about the Weehawken dueling grounds? A decent stretch of the Palisades, in the vicinity of the duel, is preserved as Weehawken's Hamilton Park. The main memorial site commemorating the dueling grounds is at the top of the cliff. It includes two historical markers, one providing a brief history of the dueling grounds themselves, and the other discussing the Hamilton Bird Duel specifically. The site also has a bust of Alexander Hamilton, and it has a boulder on which he rested his head right after the duel. It is believed that the specific ledge on which most of Weehawken's duels occurred has since been destroyed for quarrying stone. Nevertheless, you're still pretty close to the duel spot, and if you look down from the memorial site towards the bottom of the cliffs, you can get a decent sense of what the area was like. But, in my humble opinion, the best part of the park is the magnificent view it offers of the New York City skyline. I went early in the morning, and the sky was just marvelous. This is one of the best views of the city that New Jersey has to offer, and believe me, we have a lot of them. Specifically, 
Hamilton Park is across from Midtown Manhattan, so that's the part of the city you'll be seeing closest to you. For those who aren't familiar with Manhattan, the island actually has two separate skylines. There's the Midtown skyline, with the Empire State Building, and the other buildings around a Times Square and a Central Park. And then further south, there's the Downtown skyline, with the Financial District and a Freedom Tower, the tallest building in the U.S. So, Hamilton Park shows you great views of Midtown, but for the best views of Downtown, you'll want to head closer to it, somewhere like the Jersey City waterfront, for example. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Hamilton Burr Duel and what there is to see at the Weehawken Dueling Grounds today. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to hear more fascinating stories from the Garden State. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.